In Mailerlite, you have access to embedded forms, which you can embed into your website, your blog post, or use as a mini landing page. You also have promotional pop-ups, which show up with an important message. Your visitors cannot subscribe to that pop-up, but they can click it and it will take them to a sales page or special event or wherever you want it to take them. Then we have the classical pop-ups, which pop up in the middle or in the bottom left corner or right corner, in a bar at the top, at the bottom bottom, full screen on one side or the other, and this video is all about these pop-ups. So let's get right into it. To create a pop-up, go to Forms. Make sure you're in the pop-ups area here, and click Create Form. Give your form a name. I'm just going to call it Home Page, and click Save and Continue. Choose a group. I'm going to choose New Subscribers. Scroll down and click Continue. Now choose one of the templates. You can preview the template here. You can use these arrows and click Select Template on the top right corner right over here. And this will take you to the visual editor where you can choose the form type in the design area. So you can have a regular form like this. And at the bottom, you can have additional settings that will allow you to add things, for example, a sidebar here or have the sidebar on the right side. You can include some text or not in the sidebar, have it show on a mobile device or not. These are additional settings that are different for each one of these form types. These are the global settings for your form. So for example, if I duplicate this block over here and then I change the headline one to a different color, for example, Let's just change the shade of this. You'll see both of these change because these are global settings. And you can do the same thing with the text, with the link colors, with the button colors. For example, I want it to be, let's say, blue or dark red. And you have additional settings that you can change here, the hover state of the button and much, much more. So for the checkboxes, and the checkbox descriptions. You can go ahead and click Sign Up Form Settings, and here you'll see what I mean. Here are the checkboxes, Privacy Policy, Confirmation Checkbox, the Hidden Segmentation Fields, which allows you to add uh, some text to a field you created. For example, in my database, I created a promotion field, and I can assign a value, for example, seasonal. So this is a seasonal promotion. Everyone who joins this form will get tagged in their field with this word here, seasonal. Then you can add marketing permissions. This is GDPR compliant. You can also have interest groups. So people can actually choose which group they want to subscribe to. And you can use this little plus to add more. For example, maybe they want to subscribe to the team newsletter or maybe they want to subscribe to the student's newsletter. And of course, this is the names you chose, but you can also change. Instead of having new subs, you can have, let's say, for example, club. And you can also hide the groups so they will not be seen here. Click Save when you're done. Recaptcha. This is in case you have a lot of bots that are subscribing to your forms. You can eliminate most of these with this Recaptcha feature. Now, this doesn't look too good. Let's go ahead and go to the history here, recent changes, and I'm just going to undo everything here. There we go, as simple as that. And let's move on to the blocks. Here are six different types of blocks. We have some text. We have an image we can add, just like this one over here. Image and content. Social links. And then we can drag and drop these blocks as we wish. For example, if we want this at the bottom, we can do so. We can also delete the blocks by using this little trash icon over here. I already showed you how to duplicate them, but we can also edit the blocks by using this button here. For example, add an image and a link, and each one of these blocks has different settings for that. So the text one will have different things connected to text. The input field here will have settings connected with the different types of input fields. For example, here we have an email. Now we have a name. I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. 
then we can add a last name, etc., etc. And we can also just delete these input fields here and change them if we wish. For example, instead of a name field, we can use a country field. And once someone subscribes, they will go to the success page. And here you can also edit everything. Again, you can add blocks, text to the success page, whatever is needed, you can do it. The preview setting for the pop-up is right over here. This is the desktop mode. The mobile version is here. And if you need to copy the preview link, it is over here. Once you're done, just go ahead and click X and done editing. Here you can change the trigger. You can have the pop-up show after five seconds of your visitor being on the page or when he or she scrolls 50% down the page or before they close the tab. Now this is not disruptive, so your website visitors will still be able to close the tab without closing the pop-up. Now, if your visitor visits your website five times a month, for example, you can show the pop-up only once a month so they don't have to see it again and again. Of course, you can change it to weeks, days, or always, and you can change the number right over here. You can schedule the pop-up. This is good if you're having, for example, a webinar where you can turn off the pop-ups for the webinar after the webinar has started. I'm going to leave this as none. Visibility, you can always show the pop-up if you want. You can hide it on specific pages or you can only show it on specific pages. Just enter the URLs over here. And if you want to apply strict equality, you can do so by checking this box here. What this means is Normally, if you just put in the name of your website and, for example, blog slash nothing, it will show the pop-up on every single blog article. But if you have the whole URL of the specific blog article, you can click Apply Strict Equality and it will only show it on that specific blog article. You can hide the pop-up on desktop devices or mobile devices or tablet devices here. And once you're done, just go ahead and click Save Changes. You can use this code on your website to have the pop-up show up. Now, if you're using a CMS, you will have a special place for this code over here. If you're having troubles, please contact the support of your CMS. If you're using WordPress, just use the Sign Up Forms plugin here. And if you're using Shopify, just use the MailerLite app for Shopify right over here. If you want the pop-up to show up once someone clicks some text in your article or an image in your article, just follow the instructions here and you should be good to go. Once you're done, just go ahead and click continue right over here. And here is the overview. You can turn on your pop-up by clicking here, turn on or off the double opt-in settings here, edit your groups, edit your design again if you wish, edit the behavior here, and here is the script again. If you scroll up, you'll have the analytics, which will start showing up once someone actually starts subscribing. The automation is here. You can connect your pop-up to an automation if you wish. We have a separate video for that if you want. Then we have the double opt-in settings, and you can also watch the specific video for this if you want to go more in-depth. Here on the top right, you have the settings. You can edit the form, rename the form, duplicate it, or delete it. And that's about it for the pop-up form. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Again, thank you for watching. If you need more help, contact us directly or join our academy and learn all the ins and outs of MailerLite. All the details are in the description. See you there and have a wonderful day.